Hoss and Pfeffer Garage, we're all about innovation and thinking outside the box. That's why we've come up with a totally new concept that's going to take the automotive industry by storm. Everyone's heard of the coal air intake, right? That's nothing new, nothing exciting. We've come up with the hot air intake system. When you think about it, all of this right here just makes it hot coming out the other end. So why not make it hotter coming in and make that whole process more effective, right? I know. So our system is, consists of 132 of these little doodads right here placed strategically all through your intake system. Effectively heating the air up to 542.92 degrees in order to make that whole process that much more effective. Revolutionary, right? Now, would you actually want to heat the air going into your engine? Most would say no, but apparently it's a thing. Engineers designed a little heater in the intake of the 7.3 Power Stroke in order to, to heat the intake charge under certain conditions. Now, that, that seems counterproductive. I thought the whole point was to have cool or cold air fed into the intake to, to make it more efficient and, and more power. Why? Isn't that why everybody wants cold air intakes? Why uh, manufacturers have air ducts uh, from, the, from the front of the vehicle to get cool air to the motor, to the intake? But yet we have this, this heater somewhere in the intake to heat the air. I, I, I'm confused. So you know what I do when stuff confuses me? I get rid of it. The AIH air intake here. So we're going to get rid of that little doodad. We're going to plop that thing out, put in a plug. That's where we're going to plug in our boostesses gauge into that. Uh, if for, for the few that watched last time uh, we hooked directly into the manifold we deleted on the OEM little plastic hoses doodads uh, that were running around they were all cracked and frail and whatnot so we deleted on that hooked directly into the manifold so we're going to kind of make our own. So first we're going to remove the positive and negative cables from the AI reach. Now we're going to remove the AIH itself. So this is the AIH air intake heater. That won't that won't block any airflow. So we going ham on the science today, folks. We got our little heater doodad hooked up to uh, our power supply here. Um, uh, FYI, got the PPE on just in case things uh, take a turn. But. Uh, we've got everything hooked up um, and it's been sitting for a while getting its heat on and we are hundred and twenty six degrees uh, this is what we're gonna replace it with and it has a connection here for our boostesses gauge so we're gonna throw this in all right, so we got our plug. We got a little grease on the O-ring. Little uh, 
goopy goopy tape on the on the fitting. Now we're gonna plug the hole. Now we're going to see if we can reroute our boost line. Okay, we've got everything rerouted and hooked up for the most part. We have our new rerouted boost line that goes to our boost gauge that's connected to our new AIH delete plug. We've got our new lines that we made to replace the OEM lines that were deteriorated and cracked uh, that go from the wastegate solenoid to the wastegate and also down to the manifold where it gets the the pressure. This port actually run or did run over to the intake uh, just past the air filter. Not sure we, we need that. Um, I guess we'll find out. Hopefully our turbo doesn't run backwards. Electrically uh, this is the ground that went to the original AIH. Uh, we just got that kind of flopping around. For now we'll probably remove it uh, in the future when we're digging more in this area here. We also have our AIH delete wire that we have connected to the solenoid here that runs down to ground uh, with a bit of resistance in between uh, to fool the computer not to generate a fault code in the extreme off chance that we ever met the conditions in order to turn the AIH on in the first place. So we should be good to go. So again this is our little heating element that goes into our intake here. And I guess it's meant to heat the air uh, coming into the engine during long durations of idling uh, for emission purposes. Now if you if you're paying attention You'll, you'll see that, that this heater is after the intercooler, which is designed to, to cool the intake charge down, only to be heated up again. So I'll struggle with why you have something in your engine that affects the flow and efficiency 100% of the time to address a potential situation that happens maybe less than 1% of the time. Not, not following. Something else we're going to do today is swap out his, his oil cap. You can see uh, the previous resident had been uh, 
noshing on it pretty hard. Plus there's some cracks and whatnot. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put a new one on him, make him feel a little better. so we had a pretty good day at Hoss and Pfeffer Garage uh, even though we still can't find anything but we got our air intake heater deleted on we used that opportunity to uh, put us a, a fitting in to hook our boost gauge up to so we'll use that to read on our boostesses we got our wastegate actuator solenoid and the wastegate hooked up um, so we'll, we'll be modulating that again we'll see what kind of readings we get with that in line and we got a got a new oil cap on OG73 pretty sporty looking so we've got some pretty neat stuff coming up we'll be doing uh, H-pop lines not to, not to be confused with Mbop if, if you don't if you don't know what I'm talking about be thankful if you do know what I'm talking about I'm sorry may also be doing some uh, turbo pedestal stuff and uh, some some other things in and around OG 73 so looking forward to that thank you so much for watching please like share and subscribe and We'll catch you next time. I got to show you all again. Look how good this, this oil cap looks. Looks like a diamond and a goat.